Hello, Tano Xelp here, and today we are going to talk about the big picture in Warframe dedicated to the newer players. I was convinced to break this video down to a few parts, which means that there will be a part 2 and part 3 along the way. Inside, we'll be discussing unique subtopics to help you in many ways besides understanding the game better but also save you time by reducing wastage on resource, credits, and research that you may otherwise need to do yourself. I would consider this video as more of a slightly advanced beginner guide than those that I've seen on YouTube. At the start of the game, you get to pick one out of three Warframes. Once you make your choice, the game will further present you with a melee weapon, a secondary weapon, and a primary weapon for free, all of which you have to choose one out of two choices. If this is the first time you're playing despite what you see in the background, you should definitely pick Excalibur as your first Warframe. Not because it's better than the rest, personally I like Magalod, but because it's the hardest to farm relatively to the other Warframes that you could choose from. Seriously, I'm like MR18 now and I still do not have an Excalibur because I fall asleep every time I try to do the mission. For melee, you should take the Scanner, which is a one-handed sword that goes well with your Excalibur's passive ability that allows you to attack faster and harder. For a secondary, go for the Lato because it's used to craft the Bow 2, which you'll need to craft the AK Bow 2 that is also used to craft the AK Jara Babaga. What a great way to recycle your slots. Now if you don't understand what I'm talking about, you will soon and we will talk more about efficient slot usage in the next video. As for the primary weapon, it's really up to you but I would highly recommend the MK Breton because since the last time they buffed it, it feels pretty good even in PvP. Not too long after, you should reach your ship and see this which is your star chart. And at the beginning, your priority should be unlocking the star chart as fast as you can. While doing so, you're forced to do main quests as your junction requires it. For example, over at Neptune, uh, if you look at the... Uh, in order to go to Pluto, you have to complete this junction. And then it requires you to complete the second dream. This is extremely important because as you unlock junctions, you gain blueprints to craft equipments, which also gives you sort of experience to level up and quests that you need to do to access new dailies like Swordies which is only available once a day and you would be missing out the rewards the longer it takes you to unlock them. So for example over here is the uh, Swordie and these are the, the rewards that you could benefit from if you have it. I recommend rushing to this point just so that you have all your daily options available to you. Rushing the star chart also means that you'll be able to access most of the alerts, invasion, and fissure missions, which may contain valuable rewards such as resource, mods, and blueprints. So for example, over here we have the alerts, and uh, if you do not have this particular planet or map unlocked, you won't be able to access it, uh, not alone at least. But today's topic is about the end result what you'll be expecting to achieve and what you'll be spending hours grinding for. Now, although there are many different players that grind for different reasons, maybe for status and MR, maybe you are a collector and you just want to get everything in the game, but generally we grind to get stronger. It is true that experience and knowledge is useful in spy missions or raids and players skills does play a certain role, but your equipment are still the things that will almost always help you in missions. So lucky for you guys, I went back in time and got my 4 year old self to write down the key points to hours of grinding you will face to get your equipment stronger. First let's look at mod capacity. Mods are short for modules and they are basically upgrades in the form of cards. Each mod has a capacity value and equipment has a limited capacity. So in order for you to equip more mods and high ranked mods, we need to increase the mod capacity of your equipment and here are some of the items that could do that. We have the Orokin Reactors for Warframe, Arcwing and Companion Bodies and Orokin Callus for Weapons. They are also known as potatoes and they double the capacity of your equipment. Formats introduce a polarity to your slots and if they match the mod, the drain from the mod is reduced by half and then round up. Axis adapter can open up an extra slot on your warframe to allow Axis mods. And finally, auras and stands which are basically mods that also increases your capacity when you equip them. Okay, so over here I'm going to show you a quick example of a Warframe, which is my Vault Prime. And as you can see over here is the 
amount of capacity it has. I could put in things like intensify, rush, and as soon as I put on something that exceeds that capacity, I cannot put that on anymore. Because the mod capacity, this one costs 11 drain, this one is also 11 drain, and this one is 11 drain, and that exceeds the 30 capacity that I have. So you can see that I cannot put any more on. So the first step is what you could do is you can farm for something called the Argon Reactor, which is this one, so you can apply it on it. So let's say if I were to apply the one that I have, and now it's no longer at a capacity of 30, but instead 60. So now I can put in more mods. So I can put in this, uh, I don't know, let's just put some in. Now, however, you realize that there is still a, a point where you will do not have enough capacity to basically increase it some more. So what you do is you could implement something called FOMAS. Okay, if you go under options, I mean actions, and then come over here, polarization, you use something called a FOMA and you can implement polarities into your slots. So what does this do? Basically, most of your mods, all of them basically has this polarity at the top next to the number of the drain. So this one has a V polarity. If you have a slot that is already a V polarity, when you put it in, it actually reduces the drain by half and then round up um, to the nearest one. So for example, 11, if you divide that by two, you should get like 5.5. So it's gonna round up to six. So it's gonna cost you only six drain. So uh, let's see if I have another V, uh, let's say this one, so it costs less. And let's say for this one, let's put this one in and it costs less. And now what you realize is you might be able to put in another slot. But that is not all, all right? So there is also another thing which is called auras or stands. Now for weapons, for melee weapons, they have stands. Uh, for warframes, we use auras. So auras is under this category. You can see the auras that I have. So let's say if you were to put these this aura in so over here you can see next to the the drain the nine the capacity shown here number nine there's an arrow pointing upwards this basically means that it will increase your capacity by nine that is provided if there is no polarity at all however this shows a v polarity so by putting this in it actually increases it twice as much so instead of increasing my maximum capacity by 9 increases by 18 now because they are in the same polarity so that is the power of using formas on your slots okay and that is also uh, where you use a aura in your slot so now you have a lot more uh, capacity to play with you can put other things in but you'll realize that if you want to put something even stronger uh, you might still be limited so um, so that is uh, one of the case where you actually have to form maybe even more slots so they can put something else in. Uh, it really depends on your build. Now over here we have a slot which is called a Axelus uh, slot. So in order to unlock this, you need something called the Axelus adapter. And once you use it, this one will become unlocked. And all those mods under this category, you can put it in. So it's potentially an extra mod on your Warframe. And for the weapons, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, only thing, uh, for melee weapons, you have this thing called the stand. So instead of aura, there's something called stand. And it works pretty much the same. It also, depending on your stance, you can do different combos. I uh, will go through that some other time. But the idea here is generally, um, farming to get those things so that you can put in more mods to make your equipment stronger. Also, just to let you guys know, if the polarity does not match, so for whatever reason, you somehow did not plan your formats correctly and then one of your mod does not match the forma, it will actually cost you more drain. And the way it's being calculated is the total amount of drain that the mod actually has, it will increase by an extra quarter. All right, so for example, over here, it has 11 drain. So if you take 11 divided by four, you'll realize that a quarter is 2.75. And that is close to three, so it increase uh, the drain by an extra three points. 
if you take something else let's say um, let's say this one is 9 okay so 9 divided by 9 divided by 4 you get 2.25 and that is closer to 2 so it will increase by an extra 2 points and it gives you 11 okay next is to grind for the mods themselves First of all, in order to make a mod strong, you will need to rank them up with a material called Endo, and that itself is going to be a huge grind. And if you're lucky enough to get a legendary call from, let's say, the Sorties, you can rank up a mod up to a rank 10 instantly. You will also need a lot of credits to rank your mods. You might try getting certain mods by transmutating extra ones, which is basically combining extra mods that you have to get a random mod. I highly do not recommend this. I feel like the odds of getting a good mod is very slim, and also because it costs a lot. It's very expensive to actually do it. Now, for some slightly special mods like Corrupted Mods and Dual Stat Mods, you'll need to craft Dragon Keys to unlock vaults in the Dialect Maps, do nightmare missions, lure trials, and hunt for specific sort of mini boss type enemies. So a really quick example um, to show you how much it's actually going to cost. Uh, I have a mod here which is Vitality and it could be max rank at rank 10. So I'm going to try and max this out. It's already up to 5 um, and I'm going to try and max it out and you can see as I click it goes higher and higher. It actually takes like 9,900 uh, endo left and also it takes like uh, 479,000 credits. Now this is considered good because it's a uh, common mod. If I were to use a uncommon mod or a rare mod, it's going to cost a lot more. Okay, so let's just get this done first because I really need this. Okay, so it's uninstalling on all the uh, equipment that I previously had on because most likely the capacity is going to go overboard and I won't be able to equip it until I tweak it a little bit. So here we have the Transcend Fortitude and it's a rare mod. You can see by the color it's yellow and I'm going to try to rank it all the way to rank 10 and see how much it's going to cost me. It's going to cost me about um, 31k endo and like 1.5k k. Oh my god <laughs> um, yeah so just to give you a rough estimate um, a normal mission if you're lucky you could get like maybe 50 endo um, if you get any at all and what you want to look out for is mostly from the alerts I guess and also to do your sorties and get endo there you can also trade certain treasures for endo and we're gonna talk about that more in the future Next, we're going to talk about Raven mods. They're basically mods that are purplish in color. Uh, they could rank up to rank 8. Um, this mods, they could only be inquired from sorties at the moment. You do get one free when you finish the war with inquests. Um, and the mods are really strong. They could potentially change the outcome of a certain weapon. A really shitty weapon with a really good raven mod is going to make it like godlike. And odds are you're not going to get a really good stats the moment you get your raven. So you actually have to look at the stats that you have on your raven and then you want to re-roll it. Now every time you roll it, you use something called kuva. And that is the resource that you need to farm in order to be able to roll your raven to a perfect stats, sort of. So kuva farming is a thing and the more you roll, the higher the cost of kuva is going to be. Now raven can only be applied on specific weapons. So it really depends on what raven you get. If it's for the Vectus, it can only be applied on the Vectus. So since it's just like a mod, you're going to need endo to rank it up and you're going to need um, a lot of credits as well. So for this example, I don't have a lot of Raven mods because it's a relatively new account, but I'm going to try to reroll this. So this is for the Dracoon and he has electric damage and also projectile flight speed. So let's see what we'll get. I feel like it could be better. Now the first time when I roll it caused a thousand Kuvas. So let's use that thousand Kuva and see, hopefully you get something good. And here we go. Oh, okay, so punch through weapon recoil status duration and magazine capacity. Now, this, in my opinion, is not good. 
Um, so let's try and reroll it again. Come on, come on. Okay, so now it's gonna cost 1,200 kuvas. Ooh. Oh, what is this? What is this? So as you can see, the more you reroll it, um, the more kuvas it's gonna cost. So let's try one last time. Whatever it is, I'm gonna just keep it. So as you can see, all you have to do is get lots and lots of kuvas and keep rolling until you eventually get something good. On to the next topic, which is arcanes. Arcanes are a pain in the butt. So anyways, over here is the arcane enhancement wiki page. Um, this is what a arcane look like and basically what you need to do is you want to collect 10 of those arcane Put them together to make it a rank 4 arcane and that will be the best one uh, And then you apply it on either a helmet or a sidana for the warframe Now this is talking about the warframe you have to get the arcanes by doing trial missions and trial missions are basically raids The, the other name for it is raids and they usually take a really long time and you need good um, communication among your, your teammates um, and everything and there's a lot of people involved so it could be messy but if everyone worked together it could go really fluently as well however it still take quite a lot of time to finish everything now to me I never really got that time to recruit and do so um, I kind of got missed out like I met I missed out on this aspect of Warframe but I did try it before and I feel like I'm not really that into it okay another reason why I would say that's because there is a lot of arcane types now this is only just for the Warframe and there's so many arcane types and uh, even if you get one arcane per run you never really know or you don't know how long is it going to actually take for you to get the same type of arcane the one that you won over and over again for 10 times just to complete a rank 4 arcane that you won and that really just troubles me i feel like i don't know I, i'm a type of guy that has really bad luck so i feel like if i were to invest my time doing this i would spend like years and not complete what i want so I kind of skipped this whole part of the uh, the uh, Warframe. However, however, when it comes to arcanes on um, operators, on the uh, M's and also on the Czar, it's a little bit different because the blueprint is there in the store. All you have to do is get it and get the materials to craft it. And yes, to get the materials, it does take time. However, every single material that you find every single thing uh, that you do to to get those materials you can actually feel a sense of progression like you're heading towards completing what you want not like not like this it's so rng but let it go, let it go. you'll need ostron standings for your zor arcanes and you'll need cool standing for your operator and amp arcanes the distiller is basically used whenever you are removed an arcane from a specific item. Now moving on to focus. At a point in the game, you'll unlock an operator, which is a kit. And that kit could do things to help you in your fight. For example, only operators can attack and bring down the shields of the Adelon Terrace, which is a huge monster in the plains at night. The operator can use abilities and have unique passives that could help your warframe. These abilities depends on the focus school you choose. In order to get better and more abilities for your operator, you need to gain focus points. You can get focus points from equipping lens of your focus school on specific equipment while leveling. Even if the equipment is max rank, it will still gain points at a rate of it gaining experience as if it is not max rank yet. Over here is my operator. And as you can see, there are five focus school involved. And the one that I chose when I did this account is the Zunurik. So let's enter the Zunurik and you can see that I have not unlocked anything. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock one right now for the sake of the video. So unlocking energy piles will consume um, 25k uh, points. Okay, so there you go. I've unlocked it. 
so I have this energy pulse now. Passive energy picks up, grants 25% uh, additional energy over 10 seconds. So over here we have energizing dash, which basically creates this zone that replenish energy for 4 seconds it seems. Allies passing through the zone gain 3 energy per second for 10 seconds. So I'm going to unlock this one because it sounds useful. So unlock it, there you go. Now if I want to rank it up, I have to spend focus and you can see the focus being drained into it. But uh, since I couldn't max it out, I think I'm going to remove that. Holy crap. Do I actually... Ho ho ho! Jesus. Let me just do that again. So unlock this one um, and also get this one. There you go. Then there's also things like waybound. These waybound passive are things that you can carry from different school to different school. So for example, if I have, um, if, okay, let's say yes over here. So let's come back in. Let's say if I took this void siphon and it increases my operator's energy regenerate, regeneration by 15%. Now if I were to change school and go to a different school, let's say uh, Neromon, um, I will still have that passive that gives me a uh, regeneration of 15% um, and that is what waybound basically is. Um, it's a type of passive that you can carry between different schools and those are really cool and you can see like pretty much every single school has it as well so Naramon has their own waybound and then uh, I guess at the end of the day the strongest operator will have all the waybounds of all the other schools or every single school and also one specific um, focus school that you like and have it all maxed or something like that. Something else that I'd like you to note is that in order to make the waybound available for other school when you enter different schools, you also have to have this unlocked where basically you need to spend a million focus points and a brilliant Adelon shard to complete the unbinding and just so you know that is a lot of points okay now I'm going to show you how to put on a lens you go under actions over here you can see focus lenses so click that and then you select the lens that you want to use I have a greater Neromon lens that I just crafted from the foundry so I'm going to use that just click it in are you sure you want to install the greater Neromon lens? Yes. Now I realize that I'm actually not Neromon, but um, since I have a lot of Neromon lenses, I decided to make a greater, equip it, and just like boost my Neromon and get those waybounds at least. So right now my Mac over here is equipped with a Neromon lens and you can see a symbol right over here. There is an issue with focus farming and sort of a conflict here is that you have to pick a specific weapon and warframe to apply the lens on it and then you have to use those warframe or weapon in order to get the focus points. So that kind of limits you from changing into newer weapons and experiencing new warframes and that also means that you won't actually get to rank up your MR because of that. So there is sort of a conflict there and therefore I guess it's not really suitable for someone that just start off in the game and somehow you manage to get um, your operator, let's say you finish the quest really quick and you're still relatively low MR to start focus farming because uh, you won't be able to use the other weapons and I think that's going to be a problem. Um, so therefore, I guess in a way, focus farming is more towards end game where you already pretty much know what weapon you want and what weapon you don't want and also you have already reached that uh, mastery rank level um, where you can unlock everything, every single content in the game which is about MR16 at the moment. Finally, there is gilding. There is nothing much to say here. It's really simple. Just spend some standing or maybe some wisps to make the czar or amp you craft stronger. The czar will be available for further upgrades as well. It is quite a quick process. I don't even know why it's listed here. Stupid four-year-old me. 
So now that you are familiarized with the uh, categories here and what you actually need to do to strengthen them, uh, for example, if you see mod capacity, you have to think about organ reactor catalyst. You need to think about formas, you need to think about axillus adapter, you need to think about aura stance. When you see mods, you need to think about how to rank them up. You need endo, you need credits. Uh, how do you actually get those specific mods? You need to think about um, kuvas when you see ravens, also endo and credits to rank it up. You need to think about um, raids, lots and lots of raids when it comes to arcane. You need to think about um, standing from Ostron and Quill. Uh, you also need to think about lots and lots of mining. Also standings from Syndicate because it's a stiller, you get it from Syndicate as well. Uh, when you see focus, you need to think about lands, you need to think about greater lands, how to craft them, how to upgrade them, which weapon you want to apply on, and just really lots and lots of grinding on enemies to get that experience from when you kill them and then convert them into focus points. When you see gilding, um, you know what, you don't have to think about this that much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom out and see how many of these category of things you actually have to reapply to get that full ultimate set um, where you could just lean back and say that you're done. So first of all, we have the Warframe. Okay, and the Warframe, of course, you need the mod capacity, the mods, and also the Arcane. Now next is the weapons right below the Warframe. And when I say weapons, I actually mean all weapons in the three categories. So there is the primary weapons, the secondary weapons, and the melee weapon. The one that you want to use for your end game, sort of. So each one of them will require mod capacity, mods, ravens, and if it's a czar for a melee, you may also need to get arcane for it. Then there is also your companion, um, which also requires mod capacity and mods. Uh, raven only if it's the sentinel um, weapon, because the sentinel weapon does um, have a raven for it. For the operator, the focus school farm is going to be a huge thing. It's it's going to be a huge farm, and that is one thing for itself. Then there's also the arcane for the helmet and body of the operator, and also the amp. I guess um, grinding to craft the amp is also part of uh, the grind that you need to go through, and then after that, uh, you have to put in a arcane as well. Now remember arcane you need 10 of each to put in on one as you don't really need all 10 at the same time but then you need to gather all 10 to make a rank for arcane that is ultimately the best there is also arcwing which um, has their own type of weapons so arcwing there is a primary and a melee there is no secondary weapons for arcwing and uh, for each one the arcwing the uh, primary weapon and also the melee weapon, all of which you also need the mod capacity and mods as well. Now Arcwing, Conclave and the PvE sort of is um, labeled in separate modes. So you could sort of go through one without the other. I guess Arcwing, you might not be able to go through without Arcwing at some point, but you will hardly use it. And Conclave is just basically PvP, uh, I mean, sorry, yeah, PvP, and uh, it's not really affected as much because whatever you do to the Warframe in your PvE is actually also, um, let's say if you potatoed your Warframe in PvE, it's also going to be the same Warframe that's already been potatoed in Conclave. So I guess in that sense is quite okay unless you plan to use different weapons and different warframes in Conclave and PvE, then you might need to have a separate set for your Conclave. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this part of the video. I hope you guys have the big picture of what you need to strive to to be at the top of your game. And if you are new, I hope I didn't scare you because Warframe is a really great game. The point of this is to prepare you and hopefully you can save time and head towards what truly matters. Stay tuned for the next video because I have a present for you new players that I think is going to help you a lot and learn how to efficiently advance in this game in that video.
for the uh, 2700 subscriber glyph code winners will be named down at the description make sure you check it out and if you see your name there make sure you pm me on discord and claim your prize remember to type glyph away down in the comments to take part in the next glyph away and uh, again this is zelp wishing you a pleasant day bye bye